predictive text system where it can guess accurately what you want to say when you are texting someone by suggesting a few words on top of your keyboard for you to easily finish your sentence. For some of them, it's trained upon a large amount of text beforehand to be able to learn what comes next after the za you typed. But why predictive text? Well, what if you put the same logic where you predict or auto-completes the next pixel for an image, just like when you keep tapping the predictive text where it creates a lone and confusing paragraph but instead produce an image? Some of you may already heard of GPT-2 or even GPT-3, which are language models where it can produce an extremely convincing text which completes whatever you input into the AI model or generate a paragraph out of nowhere that is coherent. So OpenAI made this language model where it dumped all the text on the internet into that model and have a super large amount of parameters which is like 175 billions brute force a near perfect text generator that can basically do anything i think openai has completed one of the most important steps towards perfecting data science which is basically brute forcing first like in maths in order for mathematicians to come up with a mathematical formula first it'll require them to brute force and explore the area to understand how things work in that math realm. Okay, so back to the topic of auto-completing or predictive pixels. OpenAI recently published a paper where they used the exact same logic with GP3 text learning but on images instead. The concept is fairly straightforward and the AI just basically looks at all the previous pixels and add a new one based on all the previous ones. Then it takes in the newly generated one too and generates the next next pixel and which this continues until you generate a whole image for the input right now apparently they only provide the 32 times 32 image size so that's all we can admire for right now so how well exactly can it predict a cropped image generating natural views seems to be the best function for this ai if the crop is exactly where the birds are standing on the output has some really interesting results here's one where it even generated reflections too which is crazy the same thing goes to grassland it generates all kinds of things that could potentially be in the grassland mount rushmore has a body or leg sometimes which is hilarious i also trimmed another image of a bird and it logically generates back the bird's tail and the branch which is amazing removing the grounds of a castle also made some pretty interesting generations and with the pixel art of a castle the ai gets really creative with it and has all kinds of cool castle designs. For simple logos like Photoshop, it sometimes can generate back the letter P and S, but sometimes it just goes funny. The same thing happens to Google's logo. There are a few ones that are very close to spelling out Google or just a lot of doodles, which is pretty funny. I tried on various other logos too, like Firefox one did really well generating back, but Apple is just kind of deformed. So how much can the present pixels affect the generation? I used the socially awesome awkward penguin as an example. If you cut at the halfway without the presence of the blue pixels, it just completes the whole image in red, which is pretty logical. But if you leave a line of blue pixels, the following generations will mostly be blue too. For some more fun examples, I tested on some meme formats. It does not exactly produce a proper meme, but the AI seems to know what exactly the objective might be. Like this is a human billboard. No, I mean penguin billboard. Yeah. As for the pictures of animals or human faces, it runs really accurately like the Shiba right here, you can see. Or even the guy in the butterfly meme is now wearing a suit. What it's struggling is generating Saitama's body. Yes, this is amazing. <laughs> Uh, it has some problems generating from half of the face to make it look not deformed. Or probably it's my problem. A guy on Twitter called Michael Frayson, hope I pronounced that right, had some more fascinating results than me. He was able to produce something longer, which I have no idea how to do. For example, the ocean one right here. I'm guessing this is a boat 
and it is a really cool one in my opinion. It's like an extending view into the deep sea that was generated by GPT image. But the best result he had is on the human faces. According to him, it takes around like one hour to complete each of these results. In the end, not gonna lie, this is probably the best example of brute force out there. OpenAI literally is testing the limit of brute forcing and this is going so well. I love it. If you want to play with this AI, I'll link a collab down in the description, which is made by Alfredo. And join my Discord if you have any questions or join just for fun. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time.